This is perhaps a telltale sign that things could have bottomed out in China as far as uh, order inflow is concerned. They're still saying that most of the orders were more domestic than external, as uh, external orders continue to be sluggish. Great to be with you again, thanks. This is consistent with what we've been seeing. If you look at the data that we have for October, uh, industrial value added was 22% higher than it was in October of 2019 before the pandemic. Power consumption in October was 23% higher than pre-pandemic October. So manufacturing is not great, but it's also not terrible. And that's kind of consistent with the post-COVID recovery we've seen. We're probably at bottom. What's really unknown, I think, is when we're going to see a catalyst and what that catalyst will be for a sustainable pickback up again. But it's important for investors to remember that the economy, while it's not great, is also not terrible. Retail sales, for example, 14 percent higher than they were during the same period in 2019. And remember that the IMF is expecting China to post the second fastest growth rate for GDP of any major economy after India for both this year and next year. Indeed. And I'm looking at, you know, what this means in terms of uh, the overall environment uh, for the manufacturing sector. I'm looking at a copy posted on Reuters that is giving us a breakdown of these numbers and where the uh, thrust really came from uh, for this expansion to show up uh, in the month of November. Uh, and it seems like, it seems like there has been a pickup in orders. Like I said, not so much uh, externally, but on domestic turf. And economists at HSBC are saying that the economy is running at different speeds across industries. Though we expect the policy stance to remain proactive, which will help to sustain overall growth momentum into the coming quarters. Uh, do you think that they will continue to be proactive uh, at the margin incrementally? you know, doing pretty much what they've been doing all this while, policymakers, that is? I think, yeah, I think the two key words that you just mentioned were incremental and proactive, but incremental is the problem. The government has really been very, very cautious about taking more steps. And what I found when I was back in China last month was that activity wasn't too bad. The biggest problem is confidence is weak among households, consumers, entrepreneurs. And I think the biggest sector where confidence is a, a, a problem is in the property market. And we can see this in the difference between the way people are willing to pay for new homes versus existing homes. So in the first three quarters of this year, if you look at the 25 biggest cities in China, new home sales on a square meter basis were down 28 percent compared to the same period in 2019. But if you look at existing home sales during that same period, they're, they're 13 percent higher than they were in the same period in, in 2019. And this is because home buyers are willing to buy. They're willing to put down 30% cash. They're just really nervous that developers aren't going to finish and turn over on time the flats that they've paid for. And this is why I'm arguing that what the Chinese government needs to do is respond to this confidence problem the same way the US government responded to a confidence problem that Americans had, losing trust in our banks here in the US back in the 1930s when they created the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. I think China right. needs to create an insurance program for these down payments, and that will kickstart the new home sales.